Thank you so much, Amanda, and welcome everyone. I'm really glad to see you here today. My name is Nathan Harvey. I'm a developer advocate for Dora and Google Cloud. And I'm, I'm really stoked to have uh, John join us today. And thinking back, I think the first time I met John was on the DevOps Cafe podcast uh, many, many years ago. Uh, more, than I'll, more than I'll count, um, because then I'll just feel old. Um, but you know, just like every podcast that you listen to, I felt like I knew John. I knew him really, really well. And I knew all about DevOps and his approach to DevOps. And, and then one day, I met him in person. And it was amazing. Um, so over the years, we've developed a great friendship. Um, and I've had the opportunity to run into John at many different conferences and so forth. Uh, and I've always been a big fan of his work. Of course, you know that he's uh, not only a prolific podcaster, but also a pro prolific author, uh, speaker, uh, and, and he's really done a lot for our entire industry. In fact, if I recall the story correctly, John was the uh, maybe the only, certainly one of the very few Americans at the very first DevOps days in Get, uh, and he was certainly responsible uh, for the first DevOps days that happened in the U.S. So we all kind of uh, are, are really thankful to have John in this community and especially thankful to have him here today where he is going to share some, uh, some of his insights and understanding of Demic. So John, thank you so much for joining us here today at the Dora community and for everything that you've done over the years for the DevOps community. Back up, buddy. Back up, everybody. Uh, yeah, we go back. I remember the first ChefCon, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, one thing I was, I was just thinking as you said that is Jesse and Adam, you know, the founders of uh, Chef, gave me a credit card and just said, go DevOps. Just go out there and DevOps. So that was pretty cool. All right. I'm going to take the screen over, I guess, right? Uh, let's see what we can do here. And, John, while you're doing that, I see in the chat that you said that you're in Portland. Are you today in Portland, Maine or in uh, Portland? Yeah. I was figuring I was going to come up. Uh, Portland, yeah. oh, my God, it's early. Yeah, yeah, it is early. Yeah, it's good though. It's um, yeah. Gene runs um his forum. We write forum papers, so there's about fifty of us here in Portland for three days. So that's cool. And then I'll see you tomorrow probably at DevOps Days uh, LA, right? I won't be there. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, um, well, thanks, Nathan. You're awesome too. You know that. Well, um, but you will put me in a movie one day. So, um. The um, all right, so Deming door and operationalization. So the um, it, this may sound like I'm attacking door, but I'm not. I'm really it's, it's more of a plea for can we sort of focus a certain way? And um, so I, I've been I've, on this ten year journey of like trying to understand this guy called Dr. Deming. Um, in the last two years, uh, I got real serious. I I penned a book. It's um, actually, I've been told, uh, this is the cover, I've been told the link on Amazon should go up next week. Now that's a pre-order, so probably the Kindle version won't be out to like July. But um, yeah, it's it's been a long run really just trying to understand this guy and his impact. And But I really wanted to go into um, what I think he would think about what we're doing today and how we're doing it. Um, I've got tons of blogs where I, you can go into all the stuff about his history and why I think he's important in general and when the book comes out so, um, as well. But um, just quickly on me, I, I've um, been doing this an awfully long time. Um, I've, uh, I think I've counted them like on my 12th book right now. Um, and uh, it's one of probably the more notable ones, the DevOps Handbook. And I did a project with Gene uh, called Beyond the Phoenix Project. I worked uh, a lot of different places. I was very early in at Chef. Sold the company to Dell. Sold the company to Docker, which that that's an, a book that's coming out in about two years. I gotta wait to that. I gotta wait to be dead before that one gets published because it's gonna piss a lot of people off. Um, I just sort of left Red Hat, and today I'm working for um, just a small uh, Norwegian company called Cosly. If you want to know about it, ping me. I'm not gonna use this time for that. Um, and that, that book in the sort of middle right, Investments Unlimited, it was a project that started out. Uh, about two years ago and just turned into a book so accidentally so about nine authors but it's a pretty fun uh, it, it's not about investments it's about a bank that gets uh, audited all right so here's the thing operationalization operationalization was coined by this guy named Percy Williams Bridgman in the, early, he, in the early 20s he was trying to figure out measurements he's a physicist right and he has this uh, quote in his book says we do not know the meaning of a concept unless we have a method of measuring for it right so that sounds good right we're all Dora people 
that shouldn't upset us too much. He was a Harvard physics professor. He won a Nobel Prize for high pressure. Now, here's the thing. He was basically trying to create synthetic diamonds, and all his gauges were breaking consistently. And he really started thinking about how we do measurement in, in domains that are sometimes unmeasurable. And he was so inspired by uh, Einstein's special relativity of where Einstein used a unique technique to measure a, a sort of non-conventional measurements in space and time, right? I won't go any further into it. And I'd be, uh, you'd see how an idiot I really am if I tried to explain it any further. Um, so Dr. Deming is this guy, and again, you know, my blog, and you know, uh, I, I, I wanted to keep this short. So um, he, he was influenced very heavily by about three people, a guy named Walter Schuett, who basically invented statistical process control and really drove analytical statistics in, in a new direction for manufacturing. Um, another guy, um, basically C.I. Lewis, who wrote a book about pragmatism, which is a very interesting, like the, the, the sort of American version of epistemology, and, and then this Bridgman. And and thing about Deming was he was a physicist at the sort of what the you know the quantum physics like he's getting his PhD in physics when this whole world was changing, so everything I say from here on in just realize he was a physicist first before he became a management consultant. Um, his definition, what he called, called operational definition, an operational definition is a procedure agreed upon for translation of a concept into a measurement of some kind. That's okay, right? That sounds all right. So here's where this one's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to cause a little bit of pain and angst. Deming, in, in his last book, said, there is no true value of any characteristic state or condition that is defined in terms of measurement of, or observation. All right, now just calm down. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. All right, uh, but remember, he's a physicist. So um, in fact, I was in Oslo speaking to Mark Burgess, who was the sort of founder of Infrastructure as Code. Um, he's He was a physicist, too, and he's like, yeah, of course. That's exactly, you know. So here's the thing, all right? If I ask you to um, count the um, number of horses and pigs, and so I had a better picture in this, and I didn't get it loaded up, but um, so if, if the animal crackers, I ask you to, to count the number of sort of horses, pig, pigs, and um, you'd have a hard time because some of them are broken. We don't have clear definitions, uh, you know, the, you know, what, how, how do I count like a broken horse? What if it's just the legs? Do I count it as two? Do I try to puzzle them back together, right? So this is actually something that came out of a, um, a Deming lecture where uh, a professor of his went ahead, a professor that he worked with gave a bunch of animal crackers students that purposely broke up the pigs to like the head and, and asked that question. And you know, the answer is like, well, I can count some of them. Uh, uh, there we go. This is the one. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to delete the other one. So this is the the you know horses, elephants, and pigs, right? Um, it's clear. It's it's not clear what how you want me to count this. But here's a better example: count the number of people in a restaurant, right? Again, it seems simple. I'm not asking you to do that. There's too many people. But here's the question: Is do I count that woman on the right? Is she leaving the restaurant? Um, how about the one right to the right of her? Is she just looking in to see? Maybe she's thinking about coming to the restaurant tomorrow. Should I count the waiter or the waiters, the waitresses? Should I count the kitchen staff, right? The real question is why are we counting, right? And this is the core of what Deming was trying to say is, why are we counting? So are we counting for logistics, for restaurant logistics, supplies, food, right? That's a different kind of count. We don't count the waiters. We won't, might not count the woman on the right. We might not count. We won't count the kitchen. Are we counting for fire zone? How many people are allowed in this space at any given time? Are we counting? Is this actually on a cruise ship? And maybe it's basically weight distribution. So the real question is, why are we counting? And so Deming is famous, probably most famous for this thing called PDSA, Plan, Do, Study, Act. It, it's a form of. Um, scientific method, if you've read Mike Rother's uh, Toyota Kata, uh, there's a lot of different um, variants of this, uh, but this is probably he's most known for. And, and it comes under this umbrella of uh, something called profound knowledge, which you'll get the shortest version of profound knowledge here. But the thing that Deming said about operational definitions, which is the core of this presentation, is that one, you had to have a criteria. 
And the criteria is like the standard against which you're going to evaluate the test to provide the judgment criteria. And this would be, this aligns with his sort of planning. And, um, and also there's this notion of what they call theory of knowledge. He has these four pillars in profound knowledge. One is theory of knowledge, it's epistemology. It's how do we know what we think we know? And then he said, the second thing you need is the test. Measuring the characteristics. How, how is the clarity determined? Who performs the test? This aligns with his do, the, the actual action. Um, it also aligns with something, his sort of second pillar of profound knowledge, which is called uh, theory of variations, really sort of analytical statistics. And then the third piece for an operational definition is the decision. Whether the object material met the criteria, the test results, used to, characteristics, is it clarity? And this is your study act. You study like what were the results? Did we like the results? Do we have to redo the test? Do we have to, um, is the test okay the way forward? And it really sort of plays into this being um, a cycle, which is a continuous improvement cycle. And so the, the question I've, I've been thinking about ever since I've sort of dug deep on this whole concept of operational definitions is when we talk about things like lead time and time to restore, what do we mean by time? Right. And, and, you know, I'm going to at the end, I'll, I'll sort of you know, open up for a whole bunch of other discussions of, of terms like words matter. And, and I think and I've talked to I, I was literally like 50 leaders in the Dallas community all day yesterday. And I was asking everybody this question and like, what is lead time? Oh, God, it's easy. It's an accelerate here. And I'm like, OK, well, let me ask you from an operational definition perspective. First off, why are we asking? What's the purpose of actually gathering lead time? Right? You may have a good sense of that. What's a good, what's a good, or what is good or bad? Is there a standard? Are all the teams in the organization aligned on the same operate? Do we have an operational definition? Is the industry aligned on operation? Does team A have a different operational definition than team B? Do we even have an operational? De and so the test then, what's the measurement? Are we measuring de continuous delivery, continuous deployment? Are we measuring from um, the branch? Commit to branch, commit to master branch, pull request. Are we measuring when it hits the sort of customer? Is it a, the dark launch, the feature flag? And then furthermore, how, how are we sort of analyzing the data? Are we just taking the average and saying, look, with no sort of like, okay, what's the average forever lead time? Or what's the average per week? Or what's the mode? Or are we being a little more, you've, you've all heard of the floor of averages, right? Or are we using standard deviation? And then last but least, did it meet the criteria? What action do we take? Uh, are we continuously improving? Are we literally thinking about this as a sort of iteration? And uh, so one of the things that is a big part of Deming's sort of theory of management is this notion of analytical statistics. And the, the thing about this is, you know, I mean, like, I don't have anything against ML ops or ML and AI. In fact, I'm I'm actually a big fan of GPT. If you sort of follow me, I've been using it for incredible tool for research, right? But but the thing is you don't really need like just pure analytical statistics can tell you what your data that what what these sort of signals are in your data. And this has been used for a hundred years for building cars, for building nuclear power plants, um, for you know, just basically building airplanes. Um and, and again, I've got some really good blogs that really explain, but it basically breaks it up into a six, six sigma um, structure. And there's a, it, the data, there's operational patterns that are in operations research that will tell you what the points mean and the patterns of the points. Um, and we don't use this. You know, we don't use any of this in, in our NIT, in software delivery. And so food for thought here, you know, if I've made sense, if you think like, wow, that guy's crazy, please never invite him back. Um, you know, food for thought, right? Like root, like words matter. Root cause, root cause analysis. Again, you can read some of my thoughts about there, but if you really want to know somebody's really deep thoughts, go read Sidney Decker or John Osbar. Um, zero, zero defects. Or right, here's one that's gonna hurt. Zero trust. Right? Words matter. Medically sealed deployment. Hermetically sealed, okay? Like what? <laughs> you know, like I was talking. You know, there, there's no such thing as it, zero energy. So I don't think there's anything such thing as zero trust, right? Like that's a physicist talking. 
and and even service, right? Like, what's the three nines? You know, SLAs. You know, I think most informed people believe that SLAs are nonsense. I, I'm a big fan of SLIs and SLOs, and I think that's a great direction. But still, we got to be really cautious about defining what we're talking about when we talk about an SLO. Of what really is the operational definition of the service? Anyway, I am uh, John Willis. One thing I will tell you: if you go to work for a startup company that's based out of oil. Also, they'll make really weird pictures of you, and you'll just have to accept it. Um, that's how you find me. Um, if you want to yell at me, if you want to have a conversation, I love talking about this stuff. And really, my two best blog articles for what I've talked about here is this one called DevOps and Operationalization, and uh, the other one is the difference between enumerated and analytical statistics. So I'll leave that up just for a couple more seconds in case you really care. I'm pretty easy to find, though. Um, yeah, that's it.